Hey everybody, I'm Wes Hagen. I'm the vineyard manager and winemaker here at Clopeppy Vineyards and Clopeppy Estates in the beautiful Santa Rita Hills. You can see the beautiful fog, uh, that wonderful sort of springtime weather that we're having. Today is April 14th, Monday, which means another video wine blog. So this week I was thinking about what I wanted to do and I actually went through all my old uh, blogs and tried to look for the gaps of what I haven't talked to you guys about. And the one thing that I really haven't talked to you about is sort of sustainable, organic, and biodynamic. So I'm going to do a little bit, about maybe five or ten minutes today, on organic, uh, biodynamic, and sustainable and let you guys know what my definitions are and how I feel that those systems fit into the production of fine wine. Before I go there, I just want to thank everybody who came up for the uh, Vintner Spring uh, weekend uh, this weekend. I thought it was the best Vintner's Festival. Uh, I'd ever been to. It was a great anniversary for my wife and I, celebrating 15 years uh, from our first date, which was Harvest Festival 1999. So I think you saw that uh, Vintners is really, uh, really pushing uh, to make great events, and we hope you guys come up and see us in the future. So let's go and talk a little bit. I think what we're going to do is we're going to define sustainable, organic, and then biodynamic. And I think you can actually use sustainable in lowercase s and uppercase s. Lowercase sustainability is just sort of like calling olive oil extra virgin. It doesn't mean anything. It's a marketing technique. Sustainable generally means that you're paying attention uh, to what you're applying in your vineyard. Capital S sustainability would actually mean to someone who went to UC Santa Cruz that nothing comes off or leaves the property. So if we use sulfur on the property with a capital S sustainability, we have a sulfur mine or we can actually make a copper product that we apply to the, uh, the vine. So the idea of uppercase sustainability is everything on the farm, the cows, the chickens, the sheep, everything is producing manure. The manure goes into the field and it's a closed system. So no trucks have to come or go to deliver any materials. Now in viticulture, that's almost impossible because we have such mildew, uh, such strong mildew and rot pressure here that we need to actually spray fungicides that we cannot produce. So I kind of describe ourselves somewhere between lowercase s sustainability and uh, on the edge of organic. And even though I think organic, to a certain extent, has been co-opted, uh, you know, by a corporate interest, and it's really kind of, uh, to a certain extent, jumped the shark, in, you know, sort of in the in the world of what is organic. Well, to me, the problem with organic now is it doesn't mean delicious. To me, organic, sustainable, even if you're going to you know, really drink the Kool-Aid and go buy a dynamic, there's only really two things that they can actually provide for your farm. And number one is if, if deliciousness doesn't occur as a result of your farming methods, I think your farming methods are flawed. If organic, sustainable, biodynamic does not lead to more delicious wine, I don't think it's useful. So that's the one thing. I, I demand that my farming processes make better and better wine. So if, if that fits into the sustainable model, great, I'll use sustainable. If it fits into the organic model, great, I'll use organic. I look at sustainable, organic, and biodynamic, and I don't use many biodynamic <laughs> ideas. I don't think it really makes much sense. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But I think of it as sort of a system almost like uh, religion. You could take a little of this religion, a little of that religion, and make sort of an ethical code that believes no religion completely, that looks religion more like poetry and not maybe like a newspaper. So we can take a little sustainability, we can take a little bit organic, maybe we can even look at some of the composting practices and the uh, sort of uh, del deliberate use of certain uh, extracts to sort of try to encourage uh, more biological activity in the soil that's happening in biodynamic. Maybe biodynamic, biodynamic works, and if I think organic has sort of jumped the shark, uh, and what I was going to say, the second part of organic is really, I think, uh, engagement in your own farm. That's really where sustainable and organic and even biodynamic can be helpful. Now, if you have to walk your fields more often, if you have to observe, if you have to react to the actual uh, events and mildew pressure and all the different things that are happening in your vineyard, the more time you spend in your vineyard, the better. Now, if organic or sustainable or even biodynamic gets you there, then that's a valuable system that encourages you to engage in the farming of your own system. If you're walking your fields every day, you're going to spray less chemicals than if you don't spray walk your fields at all. Uh, obviously, you can over, you can compensate with with uh, a lack of observation by spraying more materials, and that's what we try to do here: is to observe, to react, and to use the lowest impact materials that we can. So even though I don't believe in organic, I think organic by nature is exclusionary and sort of bourgeois. Oh, isn't it lovely talking about how we can afford to grow organically grown food while the rest of the you know world has to ex exist on whatever Monsanto produces for them? And from what I understand, 
organic doesn't make sense in sustainability because organic in itself is not sustainable on a global perspective. If you snapped your fingers and turned the entire world's production of food organic, you'd kill about 25% of the world's population in about six months because we need chemical fertilizers and we need to use some of these um, uh, materials that are produced by these companies to actually keep the world's uh, population uh, actually alive. So I find that interesting too. So again, I want to be as close to uh, what's odd is even though I don't believe in organic, uh, about 85 to 90 percent of our cultural practices are organic. Now, if I can find a sustainable and uh, uh, a product that's not organically um, labeled but can get two to three times the efficiency of the organic equivalent, that means I use three times less diesel fuel not to be organic, well, that needs to be taken into consideration. And unfortunately, I find CCOF, California Certified Organic Farmers, to be a prescriptive system. I don't really play with prescriptive systems. A system that tells me what I can't do, I'm not that interested in. A descriptive system like SIP, Central Coast Vineyard Team, like, uh, what is it called, a LIVE, uh, Low Impact Viticulture Enology up in Oregon. Uh, these are great programs that say, if you do this, you get points. And if you don't do this, we may take some points away, but if you actually build your system to a point of sustainability, it's great. So we should talk just a, a little bit about uh, the bullshit that is biodynamic. Uh, biodynamic to me is, uh, it was developed by a man who had no formal ag agronomic or agricultural training named Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner was sort of the L. Ron Hubbard of his time. He kind of kept uh, the sort of mysterious cult of theosophy going. He rejected atomic science uh, he rejected materialism, which means he did not believe in physical science or the, or, uh, the science that was coming out in his day, and this was in the late 1800s uh, and the early 1900s. And he basically said that human beings were stuck on our journey of becoming beings of ether. Now, as a secular humanist and someone who believes in science, I reject any suggestions on how to grow a vineyard by someone who rejects that science. Excuse me, that type of scientific theory. Now, even if, let's just assume, boom, biodynamics works, and I don't believe that they do. Composting works, encouraging biological activity in the soil works. Bearing cow horn and tasting your wine on a fruit day and not a root day, not that interested. I think that's basically patently bullshit. Now, let's just assume, though, that, or, that biodynamics is 100% efficient. It works. It was a system designed to encourage ripeness in Northern Europe, specifically in Germany. Now, if that worked and it did encourage ripeness, it would be the last thing that we would want to apply to our vineyards in the new, or in the new world. The idea of the old world is please let it get hot in summer and let, my, let me get my fruit ripe. The goals of West Coast and New World Viticulture are, are almost opposite. The goals of New World Viticulture is please let it, let it hang. We have all the sun. We don't have to worry about you know rain and frost or rain and, and hail and all these things during harvest. So even if biodynamic was 100% efficient and efficacious, I would reject it anyways for California viticulture because its goals are antithetical to the goals of West Coast viticulture. So if it does encourage ripeness, if it does get the biological activity of the soil pushing ripeness as it would in an area that would struggle to get ripe, like in Germany, why the hell would we use it in the United States? So even if organic, even if biodynamic does totally work, I reject it. So that's sort of my feelings. We're sort of, again, sort of on this lowercase sustainable to sort of organic idea. Um, and we are actually seeing using sheep, using chickens, or showing a, a real improvement of assimilable nitrogen, clean fermentations. So when we see that the cost of using sheep and using the organic methods that we use at Clopepi, we will reject them if they don't increase quality and don't show a measurable impact on the quality of fermentation, the cleanness of fermentation, and making the style of wine we make. So here's it. Where the rubber meets the road is quality. If organic leads to quality, we'll do organic. If sustainable leads to quality, we'll do it. I don't see any measurable or any scientific evidence that biodynamics has any measurable impact, except maybe it helps soil, uh, uh, like I said, soil fertility through uh, composting. I believe in composting. I don't believe in Rudolf Steiner. I don't believe in biodynamics. If you do, leave a message. Let's have a conversation about it. I'm always willing to learn something about this stuff, but you can see that I have strong feelings on this. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our talk today, and uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can on next Monday, and we'll talk about something new. See you then. Bye.